Hi friends, this is Neeraj here once again from Moscow and in the today's topic I would like to talk about challenges and opportunities in debt market in India regarding what is the what is the opportunity for investors and what one should look for and what are the problems faced issued by this investors in uh, in the investment in debt market so uh, actually uh, one uh, ncube collaboration uh, company of india had organized a webinar on the debt market opportunities and challenges uh, on uh, yesterday on, on sunday and uh, uh, it was uh, attended by these panelists were from reputed names from the credit rating agency mutual funds and banking sectors so i would like to just start with the highlights of discussion on debt market and investment opportunities uh, undertaken by all this expert panel of experts as well as the challenges in this market the problems faced by the investors as well as the bond issuers and then i will conclude with my key takeaways and views on this and solutions for tackling the some of the key issues just to start uh, i would give you little background about debt market or the bond market as it's popularly known worldwide india has done reasonably well in developing bond market as size of bond market has increased eight times eightfold in last 20 years from 66 billion us dollars to currently about 530 billion us dollar debt market in india is dominated by government bonds and securities comprising more than 60% of the bond issues and only 17% are corporate bond issues there is need to increase this participation to develop corporate bond issues in line with such debt markets in other countries like in malaysia in usa and uh, europe so all these countries have uh, much uh, the participation uh, in the debt market by corporate uh, is much higher uh, it, it, right in india we have this uh, debt market which is mostly of the 60% more than 60% debt issues are by the government securities or it's a government bonds and only 17 to 18% is the corporate bonds so we by more participation there can be more corporate bond issues coming into the market and that way that offerings or you can say the product offerings is much more varied and not only government uh, bonds are there for investors to invest Gover means investors have more choice to invest whether in government bonds or in corporate bonds and if more corporates issue bonds in this debt market then the de development also the breadth and the depth of the debt debt market also increases so so basically that is this that the world over the bond market or debt bond debt market is dominated by institutional investors as it is called wholesale or primary debt market and retail participation or retail investment in this market happens through debt mutual funds only so because debt market risks are complex and minimum ticket size of investment is much higher uh, as compared to say that stock market or anything like in stock market even you can invest 1000 rupees and uh, you won't have to you know you can buy one share or two shares of any company and you can uh, invest that way but in debt market that minimum ticket size is uh, uh, i think around 500000 rupees in india uh, so starting from minimum 500000 rupees to anything about that so that also makes it difficult for retail investors for directly buying or selling bond unlike in the stock market which you can do it any retail investor so there is not much another issue is that there is not much depth depth and the breadth in the debt markets in india and this creates liquidity problems for investors so let me explain this uh, uh, in the, by giving you an example just recently in last week of uh, april franklin temple mutual fund franklin templeton mutual fund suddenly announced the winding down of six of its debt fund schemes which jolted the investors you know overnight they just wound down this means what is the meaning of this this means that investors money is locked and he or she can't sell this mutual fund 
till the time this fund managers or the fund again comes back and is able to sell those corporate bonds which are held in that fund's portfolio into the market and then return that money back to the investors so basically this happened or uh, because there is no guarantee i mean whether this will happen whether the funds will come back and sell it in, in, in uh, this this corporate bonds into the market and they will be able to get money or some money or whatever it is there there is no guarantee as such but this is what the general assumption is that that if you know post covid economic crisis but nobody knows how long it will continue so if and when so there are a lot of ifs and buts so that is the reason that uh, why and why fund houses uh, decided to wind up this uh, scheme because they told that they couldn't liquidate corporate bonds and securities which they were holding in into their portfolio into the secondary market despite many of these bonds were very high rated triple a rated but still because of this panic and uh, crisis and all this lockdown uh, you know suddenly you know there was uh, no buyer in this uh, in 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 the bond market so that was this created a liquidity issue liquidity problem and also it shows the depth of the bond market in india as far as the participation or the number of uh, participants is concerned it's very low it's very shallow so if any some little bit of crisis and you will see suddenly the bond market there is no buyer there is no seller so even if you hold triple a rated or high rated bonds it doesn't have any value because you can't sell it and you can't get the money out of that so this is the this is the big very very uh, typical problem in india in bond market debt market so one of the suggestion for addressing this liquidity issue was given by this uh, mfi that uh, mutual fund association of india ceo who was one of the panelists he told that rbi should act as a buyer of the last resort this means that any such unexpected crisis times or events rbi can step in and buy high rated corporate bonds to provide liquidity as well as the depth in the bond market this will also boost the confidence of investors into this overall uh, capital market so that was uh, one of the things another point was to give you that what is the assets under management uh, of mutual funds in india so as of the figure was given that asset under management as of uh, present in india is approximately around 1.1 trillion dollars this is the size of the assets managed by the mutual funds out of this it's uh, between debt and equity it is 50 50 so 50% or around 550 billion dollar is in debt and the equivalent it is in the mutual uh, in sorry in equity so for retail investors interested in debt market investment through mutual funds is the best vehicle so that is there so if you are interested as a investor to invest into the debt market or the bond market or fixed uh, fixed income market what it is called the mutual funds become the best vehicle debt mutual funds also fourth point uh, one of the main point raised was also a lot of questions were raised regarding the credibility and the trustworthiness of credit rating agencies because investment decisions uh regarding investment in any particular corporate bond is only taken after considering the credit rating of that bond provided by the credit rating agencies and also the bond yields and the interest and the returns are decided depending on this rating uh, given by this so so uh, so just an example is that high re- high rated uh, bonds uh, yeah, like triple a rated bonds that's the higher rate, highest rated bonds uh those corporates uh, will be able to uh, raise money at a lower interest rates as compared to say a corporate which rating of its bond is say double a which is lower than the triple a so then they that corporate may have to offer little higher interest to the uh, investors to get the money so this is this is what you know the rating agency plays a very crucial Uh, and also it it shows that that the reliability or that credibility of that particular corporate means how safe is your investment so that 
gives a assessment of risk return assessment kind of a risk profile assessment is done by this credit rating agency so the credit rating agency's role becomes very crucial but some recent events like defaults on bonds by ireland fs divan housing and some of this uh, reliance adaj group companies and telecom companies also raised doubts about the rating agency's reputation and ad advice so these were some of the issues in short which were raised in the webinar now i will give you my takeaways and views regarding the issues and probable solutions first credit rating agencies plays a very crucial role as we told so in my view such agencies should be made more independent ethical as well as the knowledgeable about that particular corporate or the industry segment in which this corporates are uh, working because most of this in the most cases these agencies get fees from the corporate clients for whose debt issues they give rating so how this can be solved my view is that institutional investors can have their own independent professional analysts or rating agents with the knowledge of relevant industry and then decisions regarding investment can be made another suggestion is that ratings should not be static in the sense that once it is given at the time of issuance of bonds it should not remain continue to remain valid forever it should remain valid only for say for 3 months so for every quarter it should be reevaluated and fresh ratings should be given as per the changing scenario also rating agencies should come out with frequent rating updates on any event happening say like corona virus or any political or socio economic geopolitical any such issues or policy decisions changes anything having direct or indirect impact on that industry in which that corporate is working or overall corporates having some kind of a regarding policy changes having some impact they should come out with that event and the revaluation of the rating second my view of solution is india has a very bad reputation as far as enforcement of contract is concerned this is also adversely affects ease of doing business ranking in the world i can just tell you about russia that contract enforcement or respect of written and uh, contracts and agreements here are quite high and any dispute arising out of this contract would be solved within 6 to 8 months by russian courts that is the maximum time uh, it will be solved any business dispute now the same can't be said about indian courts because courts in india in generally take decades and ages to give decision on any case and often the quality of judgment is also questionable because of the lack of understanding of commercial financial market aspects related to pertinent to that particular uh, dispute this makes defaulter or the corporates or anybody who doesn't want to uh, respect the written contract so they are not afraid this makes you know defaulter or the corporates or anybody uh, not afraid of any repercussions of breaking this contract okay or not enforcing this whatever is written in the contract uh, the terms and conditions and because of this the you know the market sentiments and investor sentiments are vitiated and which in turn adversely impacts the trust in the system and overall collapse happens in the financial market the third and the last my suggestion to about retail investors my advice to the investors retail investors is that that despite hubri by many big fund managers about the highest returns given by investment in mutual funds over some long periods of time you would be better off investing directly in stock market of course through the advice of some independent analyst or advisor like me or anybody you know whom you trust or and also uh, by paying a nominal fees uh, you know because that uh, person would not have any such bias or uh, any vested interest into giving you advice because it's professional he would be happy receiving that fees for giving you a professional advice and not with any 
particular intention in their mind or you as a investor you should also do your own little homework about some particular company in which you are want to invest or you know you read about it and you then take advice of some independent guy and you know you can invest into this market so this is the best way and second is the bank deposits which you can also put your money into which will keep your risk and returns safety on the balancing side at least government and reputed private bank deposits will still keep your capital safe and that should be the mantra you know you should your main capital principle should be always be saved even though returns may be smaller compared to say debt mutual funds or uh, you know uh, that way but you should never forget one basic principle of investment is that higher returns entail higher risk it means that if you want higher returns then you should be ready for high risk to your capital so that is the some few tidbits and takeaways from my side to for investment into the debt market in india that's all thank you for watching my video and uh, you know i without wasting much time i would just say that if you if you like it subscribe it and uh, share it with your friends and uh, for any particular advice or the professional advice or uh, and uh, anything you can contact me my description my details are in the below description box and also if you like my channel and you want this independent views coming through to you uh, you can uh, help me by contributing to my channel so that also bank details accounts are all given in the description box that's it ciao from neeraj here from moscow thank you once again